Hello, welcome to Stackable, the all-in-one solution to building stunning websites with the WordPress block editor. What is the Query Loop block? The Query Loop block was one of the new additions to WordPress in the release of WordPress 5.8. It's an advanced block that allows you to display posts based on parameters that you set. Essentially, it's like a PHP loop without the need to code. The query loop displays content dynamically. This means that we can edit the content inside the query loop itself, but we can design it according to our liking. Query loop patterns are layouts that determine how the query loop is displayed. There are various options to choose from, and you can view them in a carousel or grid format. You could also simply start blank wherein you can begin with a simple template that you can add to and further customize. The anatomy of a query loop consists of nested blocks inside a post template, and inside it, you may add blocks such as, but not limited to, post title, post author, and post featured image. In the toolbar, you'll find the display settings. Here is where you can control how posts are displayed in the query loop. The first setting is the items per page. You can type in the value you want, or use the up and down buttons to set how many items you want to be displayed per page. The second setting is the offset. It allows you to control how many posts you want to skip displaying inside the query loop block. This is helpful if you highlight your first post somewhere in your page, and you're using your query loop to display the other posts. The last one is max page to show. This controls how many pages you want to be displayed by the query loop. Moving on to the inspector, you will find more filter controls and design settings. You will see the post type drop down menu inside the settings panel. This lets you choose what post type to display. You will find here the core post types, page and post. However, if you have custom post types, you will also find them here. Below the post type menu, you will find the order dropdown, where you can choose how the posts will be sorted. There are four options, newest to oldest, oldest to newest, A to Z, or Z to A. Navigating to the filters panel, this is where you will find more specific filter controls, such as categories, Author, and Keyword. Now moving on to designing the contents of your query loop. Currently, design customization is limited as you can only customize the typography, layout, and colors of the blocks inside the query loop. You can do this by selecting the block and opening up the settings in the inspector. Designing a block in one post inside the query loop will automatically be reflected in the rest of the posts. So if you change the background color of this text block for this post, so does the rest of the posts. As we've said, designing with a query loop is limited, but if you're a stackable user, you're in luck. You can actually further customize the query loop using stackable blocks and our dynamic content feature. You can fill up the query loop with Zackable blocks and display content by using Zackable's dynamic content functionalities. Let's take a look at this example. Here, we are designing the homepage of a typical recipe blog, and we want to add a section displaying the latest recipes. Let's head to the editor to do this. Here's a container, and inside let's add the query loop block. Click the Choose button, and let's go to the grid view and select the grid pattern. In the Settings tab, we'll leave our selected post type as Post, since this is what we want to be displayed by our query loop. However, let's toggle off the inherent default layout setting so the query loop fills up the space.
Let's add the card block at the bottom of this post and delete the other blocks so that each post will be inside the card block. See how the other posts reflected that change? Next, let's add images to each card. Because Stackable's dynamic content capabilities makes it possible to fetch all posts meta, even including the featured image. We can use that to add images to our query loop. Just select the image block, and in the inspector, you will see the dynamic fields button when you open the image panel from the style tab. Again, Leave the dynamic source selection as is, and in the dynamic fields menu, select featured image URL. Click apply, and that should display the featured image of each post. Let's customize the card block a bit to match the rest of the homepage. Now, for the title of the block, let's use dynamic content to fetch the title of each post. Highlight the placeholder text, click the dynamic fields button, Leave the dynamic source as is, which is current post, select post title in the dynamic field menu, and click the apply button. See how that fetched the title of each post? Let's just design that for a bit. You'll just be deleting the subtitle block since we won't be needing it. And how about an excerpt for each post? We can do this by highlighting the placeholder text and clicking the dynamic fields icon in the toolbar. Now instead of the post title, let's select post excerpt. Input the amount of word length we want for each post and click the apply button. That should do it. Finally, for the button, let's type and get this recipe for the button text. We could also use dynamic content to link each button to the whole post. Just select the button and navigate to the link panel of the style tab in the inspector. In the link URL field, you will see the dynamic fields button yet again. Click this and the dynamic content modal will appear. For the dynamic fields menu, type in post URL and select this. Click apply and that should do it. So if we click this button, it should open the new recipe. Great. Let's design this button to follow the design of the whole page. Let's preview how this looks like in the front end. This is looking pretty great. See how using dynamic content inside the query loop can enable you to build more advanced loops unlike before. There you have it! Now you have a deeper understanding of how the query loop block works and how to combine it with stackable blocks and features. We hope that this tutorial was helpful for you and that you get to apply it to your web design. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. If you need more information regarding Stackable, feel free to join our Facebook community or visit our website. We'll link them down below.